Hey, what's going on everybody? January Flowers here and I know what y'all may be thinking. Girl, why are you digital? This is my third attempt doing this video. Yes, the first two reviews I did of um, Pretty Little Things, the first two reviews got taken down. So I'm doing this one digitally. Episode two is up, but this is a review of episode one. I did review it. I'm going to break it down again and try to bring that same energy I did for the first time. So the first the first thing we see when we go into Pretty Little Things is this 1999 and all of these girls are going to a dance. You know, they celebrate and they party. Yes, they ready to go have some fun, y'all. So they go to the dance. But we get the point of view of a girl. She's crying. She's like holding her stomach, walking into the event, and we don't know what to do. We don't know what's going on. We don't know the story. So the girl walks into the um, dance and she falls and collapses in front of another girl. Now, the girl, she begging at her knees. She like, help me, help me, please help me. Can you help me, please? And the girl's like, no, I'm not going to help you. And the other girl towards her was like, mm, don't help her. Like telling the one girl not to help her. So they didn't help her. So the girl's like looking around at the party and she realized that no one there was going to help her. So she decides to climb up all the way up to the top where um, the bleach, not the bleachers, but like all the way up in the banisters. This girl jumps off the stage and hits not even the stage, the railings, the ceiling. <laughs> And she collapsed on the ground. She did, y'all. So we get all these five girls standing around her. And basically, these are the five girls that evolve into the five moms we now see on Pretty Little Things. Now, the first mom we see, she's the parent of Imogen. Imogen is a pregnant teen. So, you know, and we catch them in the middle of a debacle. Her friend Karen comes over to get all her belongings out of the closet, girl. She won every damn thing. And that's because she feel like um, Greg, her boyfriend, she felt like Imogen kissed him. Now, we don't know the backstory yet. Make sure y'all check out my part two because we find out more of the story in part two. So she's taking all the stuff out Imogen closet. The girl Karen like, yeah, I'm taking all my stuff. You ain't good enough to keep none of this. But then Imogen tries to explain to her, girl, it's not that deep. And the whole time he kissed me. I'm, t I'm keeping it real queen. He kissed me. So of course Karen doesn't want to hear it. She says, you know what? You can keep everything. And she goes to storm out. Mind you, she stopped because when she goes to her door, she sees a hallway full of water. It's bath time in the hallway. It's flooded. So she's looking at Imogen like, this is your house. What's going on right now? So the girls walk down a hallway and they open a door only to discover Imogen's mom. Sitting in the bathtub, y'all, doing a graveyard shift. It looked like her wrists were slashed. And then it has this letter A on the wall behind her. And that's like the only clues we really get. And then it cuts to like two months later, like a month later. Imogen is now living with this girl named Tabby, right? So I guess her and a girl Tabby, cool. The whole time Tabby's mom is one of the girls who was in that 1999 scandal at the school when a girl, mm, pay attention to the queen, when a girl jumped or whatever. So she's staying there with them now. They all living together. So now that she's there with them, um, the mom was like, well, if you feel comfortable enough, I'll give you the keys to go up to the house talking to Tabby. And Tabby's like, okay, I'll go. And I guess um, Imogen overheard them because she comes down the stairs and she's like, well, I'll go too. It's a couple of things there that I wanted to pick up. So she's interested in um, going to the house. She's not nervous. So they're like, if you feel up to it, go. And then the girls end up going to the house before school. But the girl, she doesn't, Imogen doesn't feel up to going inside. So they just go to school. And as soon as they walk through the hallway, y'all, uh, you know who it is. Your homegirl Karen getting on everybody damn nerves. So um, when they go into the school, Karen's sitting at the table. And she's like, you know, vote for Karen. You know, is a vote for me. Yes. She's trying to get a vote for the spirit queen. Girl, nobody voting for you. So as the girls come in, um, she challenges um, Tabby and Imogen because she gives Imogen a fake hug and she like, hey girl, you know, I heard that baby coming, my girl. I wish you and that baby the best, honey. 
knowing that she lying. She ain't focused on that baby. So she hugs Imogen and she's like, no one wants your pregnant corpse here. Like she tells that girl that in her ear. And I was like, ooh, this girl's salacious. And then her homegirl, Tabby, was like, back off. Why do you always have to be so negative, Karen? And they walk away. Now, as they walk away, we see another girl. Um, at this time, I didn't know her name, but her name is Farron. Farron is like this ballerina girl, and Karen really wants to try to be cool with her. She was like, Farron, Farron, could you come over and, you know, Farron, come over. Farron kept it moving. Farron, that's my home girl. She kept it right on moving. She said, girl, I ain't checking for you, and kept it right on moving. Then Karen gets her eyes set on this girl who's looking at poster boards. And the posters she looking at are all LGBTQIA themed. So she know that the girl is probably questioning her sexuality. She don't know what to do next. So Karen's like, oh, well, mouse is it? You really don't have to go to that meeting. We all know you a big old queen. So she doesn't take that well. She's like, whatever, you're just a basic Barbie. Mouse, you know, she did the best she could with the comeback. And then as Mouse was running away, she bumps into a girl, right? The camera shows an ankle bracelet, a slushy, it show everything. And basically introducing us to the character Noah. So Noah, we already can see she off the chain of straight popping. Noah has to be drug tested when she enters school grounds. Noah seemed like she ain't nothing to be played with, y'all. And we also see that Mouse is a part of like a computer club. She's like in the Glickman's computer club. You know, we see that um, Tabby is in a cinema club. And she's really big in cinema to the point that she's like, I think I want to have a meeting for Jordan Peele. And not a meeting. She said, I want to have a movie night where I show all Jordan Peele movies because no one in this class knows about black cinema and the teacher isn't promoting it. So she says she'll do it for herself. So she's decided to have um, a black cinema night. She works at a local theater, we find out. So she's able to put that together. I think that's everything we kind of see. But then we cut back to Imogen. Now, Imogen is in the nurse's office. And we saw earlier when Noah was in a nurse office for her drug test that Karen has a twin sister named Kelly. Keep that in mind, y'all. She got a twin sister, her name Kelly. So we see Imogen in a nurse's office and she basically said, I'm gonna get rid of this baby. What I gotta do to get this baby about me? And a nurse is like, baby, you six months. How we gonna let that go? And you six months, what we gonna do? So the nurse basically saying she got to ride out the next three months and then she can have options for adoption, right? So Imogen says she kind of felt like that was the reality of it. But she was like, since her mom is gone, she didn't know what she was going to do because her mom said she had her back. You know, her mother used to always tell her, as long as I'm here with you, I'll have your back. But it's like, now what do she do, you know? So she really wanted the baby gone. And one thing I noticed the nurse said before she left out, she was like, well, I'll keep your secret. It's safe with me. Mind you, the secret was not safe with her at all. So now that um, she said that to the principal, I mean to the nurse, <laughs> later on we find out she's called to the principal office because the principal is saying, oh, I heard that you're feeling some type of way about the baby. Maybe we can make um, a special place for you and stuff like that. And she's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, some students have brought it to my attention that they're uncomfortable with a pregnant um, student in a school. So, you know, she already figured like she know who that is, right? Mm-hmm. Now, we do get um, a couple of outside of the school stories. One, well, a few specifically. One with Noah doing her community service. <laughs> this is kind of wild, but Noah is doing community service, right? And the person who runs her community service is the sheriff of the town. And the sheriff is Karen and Kelly's father. You know, they the mean girls at the school. That's her father. So now... <laughs> Noah is out doing her service and we see this large figure. He has a disfigured face or a mask on, disheveled hair, and he's watching her from a close by window. So Noah notices him and says, oh, and decides to run over to the cop and tell the cop. So she going up to the sheriff's car. Why when she gets to the car, 
she see the sheriff sitting there with his head leaned back. Oh. And then she see another little head going up and down like this. Right? <laughs> so as she gets closer, it's not funny, but she sees the sheriff, right, getting sloppy toppy from a student. The student is a male. Now, I know there's so many factors in this, but overall, it's wrong. So what she did was she ran away like she seen a ghost, honey. She said, ah, I got to get out of here. So she stopped running away as if she didn't see anything. And um, that just was a lot right now, okay? That was a lot. Now, something else that happened outside the school was, um, what was it? it? It was, all right, so we had Noah. Oh, Tabby, yes. There was a scene in the school where Tabby runs into the boys' bathroom, right? So she goes in the boys' bathroom and she grabs a camera and then she dashes out the door. Then we see her go to work. So Tabby goes to school and go to work. She goes to work and we see that she has a little flirtation with her manager, Wes. You can see she has a co-worker named Chip, but he's really not in this scene that much. Her and Wes kind of talk about cinema and they going back and forth and Wes is like, Oh, it's so, so good to be able to talk to a girl like you and you have such a nice mindset. Basically running game on this young girl, but if she if she's smart, she using them for the free rides. That's what I would use them for because at the end of almost all the conversations, he's asking her, do you need a ride home? So at the end of this one, he's like, do you need a ride home? And she's like, sure. So he gives her a ride home, but on the way home, he leans in to try to kiss her. Mind you, this is a young child. And this is a grown man. So he leans in to kiss her. And then out of her eyes, she see the killer. And she's like, oh my God, do you see that guy? And he's like, yeah, I'll go say something. She said, oh no, let's get out of here. And that's when they just drive on. So they leave. Let me see what else. Um, yeah, Wes tried to kiss her. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, yep, she wanted her baby gone. Yep, mm hmm So, episode one kind of showed how all the girls end up coming together as a collective. Because a lot of bad things happen <laughs> to Miss Karen. Karen goes home that night and she talks to her father about um, basically losing out the ballerina contest. So, in this episode, we see that Farrah actually is crowned the Black Swan. Now, of course, Karen tried to be shady to her. She said, of course, you would end up to be the black swan. I mean, look at you. And of course, she's talking about her because she's a black girl. She said, so you're black, so you're going to be the black swan, black in a black theater. Of course, you know, but she's just being shady and being hateful. So she tries to tell her father, you know, I lost it because of appearances. And he's like, how could you lose it if you were the best? To live in my house, you have to be the best at all cost. So that's what he's telling her. He's going down all his lists and accolades and how he wouldn't have the luxury items he has if it wasn't for his hard work. Child, please, your dad is getting slopped off and topped off by local athletes at the school. Hmm. Now that's real tea. So the next day at school, we see that all Karen's posters are destroyed and all um, Imogen posters are up because Imogen told her the previous day in school, she said, not only am I running for prom, for um, Spirit Queen, I'm going to win because Imogen felt that Karen was the one who told the principal that she needs to leave school grounds. So she stormed in front of her and said, not only am I entering, I'm going to win. But right after she said that, a whole bunch of bad stuff happened. They found a bloody mouse in a girl backpack. When she op when Karen opened up her backpack, a blood mouse fell out of it. Child, she went to put on her shoes for ballet, and it was razor blades in the bottom of her shoe, cutting up her feet. Noah want went to go get her drug test. Girl, she failed twice. They said Noah had trees in her system. Um, they blamed mouse for putting a mouse in a girl backpack. Everybody getting blamed for stuff. Tabby and Imogen were blamed for the posters. And everybody else got blamed for other stuff. So all the girls end up in detention. And they say, we have one thing in common. They said, what? What is it? What could it be? What, girl? We don't know where you be at. She said, we're all here because of Karen. So now they have one motive in mind. Get Karen. Get Karen. 
But so far, episode one was good. I hope I didn't miss anything. This is my third time reviewing episode one. <laughs> Hopefully, my last. But overall, I am liking the series. If you want me to keep reviewing, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Remember, do the best you can with what you got. Now, do I have a favorite character so far? No. So far, I do not have a favorite character. But I like how they're fleshing out the characters. In episode one, we had someone's mom be killed. It wasn't on camera. But we also got a janitor. When um, the killer was up at the school, I guess, setting everything up, the janitor was on school grounds. And he tried to stop him. Mm -mm, he got stopped. So I think it's a good mix between drama and slash. So I'm definitely going to stay invested. So hopefully you guys like it because I definitely want to keep reviewing the series. Okay, I think I said enough. I think I remember everything I wanted to say. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! <laughs>